Okay, guys. Um, for today, just a couple things. Uh, you are assigned a 10 question quiz. You should open up the PowerPoint, take some notes. And then I've also attached two worksheets that will pretty much wrap up um, progressivism today. Ooh. And um, that's going to talk about William Taft as president and Woodrow Wilson, pretty much their policies and ideas towards progressivism. Uh, and then after that, like I said, you're going to complete two charts and submit them to Edmodo as well. This will all be due tomorrow night at 11.59. So the due date will be Thursday night, 11.59 p.m. Um, so let's get started. You can, the quiz today is only on sections one through three. Today we are doing sections four through five. Um, you should expect another 10 question quiz on Monday. So that will obviously cover what's left of chapter 17. And then we'll move forward. So let's take a look. Okay, so we already talked about the Roosevelt um, square deal, all that great stuff. So we're going to be looking at section four, which is progressivism under William Taft. Um, we're looking at this because um, Taft's approach to progressivism didn't make anybody happy in his party. So what happened was this led to a split in the party and it made way for the Democrats to take control over the House for the first time in 20 years. Um, not only did the Democrats take control of the House, but for the next election, they also took control of the presidency, the executive branch, which is why it's important. Um, it matters now because third party candidates continue to wrestle with how to become viable candidates. We have not had a third party president in the United States in, you know, ever. But what we're seeing here is that every election cycle, we see Republicans and Democrats. In the primaries, we see um, third parties. Um, and in the generals, we see primaries. However, they don't win because the majority of votes go to either Republicans or Democrats. So Taft becomes president. Uh, he broke up 90 trusts. He combined the Payne Act and the Aldrich, uh, the Payne Act and the Aldrich tariff to uh, to create the Payne Aldrich tariff. And this compromise pretty much morphed both together and didn't make anybody happy. So basically, the other progressives said that Taft wasn't being progressive enough as president, and they criticized him for this compromise. Um, a man by the name of Richard A. Ballinger removed 1 million acres of forest uh, from the conservation and moved it towards public domain. Uh, Gifford, uh, oh, I spelled that wrong. Pinchot, who was head of the U.S. Forest Service, spoke out against Ballinger and Taft fired him. So then the, the party splits, like I had said previously. The party has two wings. They're progressives who want reform and change and conservatives who don't want change. Joseph Cannon was the political boss and speaker of the House at the time. Um, nobody really liked him, but they weren't sure what to do with him. Uh, this created a even further division within the two groups. And this weakness kind of made way for the Democrats to kind of take control and take power because they were unified, whereas the Republican Party was divided. Um, in 1912, after saying he was not going to, Roosevelt decides to run for a third term. Republicans nominate Taft. Um, so Roosevelt forms the third party, which was the Bull Moose Party, and their main agenda was reform. Democrats nominate the New Jersey governor, Woodrow Wilson. Um, the choices in 1912 were Wilson, Taft, Roosevelt, and Eugene V. Debs. We know that Eugene V. Debs was a socialist. Um, Wilson's campaign was coined New Freedom, and he wanted stronger antitrust legislation. He wanted to kind of take power away from big corporations and give it back to the people and give them more freedom. He wins. Um, we're going to see a lot more Democrats in Congress, and we should take note that 75% of the vote went to candidates who favored economic reform. So basically everybody but Taft, because he didn't do enough last, during his last term to kind of convince the people that he was for reform. All right, Wilson's New Freedom. The main idea of this section is kind of to talk about how his strong reform agenda labeled him as a progressive leader. 
And during this time, you know, with, with Wilson's, you know, openness and efforts in reform, we're also going to see the passage of the 19th Amendment, which grants women the right to vote. Like I had said earlier, he believes in attacking large concentrations of power, like trusts, and giving them back to the people. Uh, for as progressive as he was, similarly to Roosevelt, he um, is from the South and he fails to fight for African American civil rights. He wants to attack the triple wall of privilege. These are trusts, tariffs, and high finance. And he pushes for the, the passage of the Clayton Antitrust Act. This basically strengthens the Sherman Antitrust Act and it makes certain uh, certain monopolistic business practices illegal and protects the right of labor unions and farm organizations. Uh, we are also going to see the establishment of the Federal Trade Commission. Um, this is called the FTC. Sorry about that typo. And this is a watchdog agency, right? A watchdog kind of makes sure that everybody's staying in line and protects people. Um, this is established to investigate and stop unfair business practices in the U.S., um, Wilson decides to lower the tariffs, but the U.S. needs a new form of a uh, new source of revenue. And so they passed the 16th Amendment, which is a legalized federal income tax. Um, federal Reserve Act of 1913 divides the nation into 12 districts for banking. And this strengthens the way that banks were run and quickly adjusts the amount of money in circulation. You guys know that um, it's bad to have not enough money floating around in the economy. And you also know that it's not great to have too much money floating around in the economy. So last year in Gov and Econ, you guys kind of learned about um, the Federal Reserve System a little bit, right? Uh, it's a national banking system that controls the U.S. money supply and the availability of credit in the country. And lastly, the most important part of Wilson was the fact that um, women, women uh, earned the right to vote. We know that the National American Women's Suffrage Association played a large role in this feat, also known as NASA. Um, Carrie Chapman Catt was the president of NASA, and she was accompanied by other um, suffrage uh, suffragists such as Lucy Burns and Alice Paul. The 19th Amendment was passed in 1919 and ratified in 1920. All right, so that's all we got for this is all we got for the end of the progressives. We're going to move on next on uh, Monday. You have to do your quiz and you have to do your charts, submit them. And um, let me know if you have any questions. Please shoot me an email. Um, I will talk to you guys soon and establish a Zoom meeting for next week. All right, girls. So enjoy the rest of your day. Let me know if you need any help. Shoot me an email.